Hi there, Jeff here from the Wetsuit Center talking to you today about the Seaskins Rewired uh, Wetsuit for winter 2020 into 2021. And uh, pretty much gonna be the same suit that it was for summer, so it'll probably carry through until next year as well. But basically the Rewired. And um, when we say seasons, it basically uh, refers to the thickness of the wetsuit. Okay, so for winter in the UK, and um, for pretty much most of Northern Europe, you're gonna be looking at either a 4-3, which is four mil on the body, three mil on the upper body and shoulders, 5-4, which is the same obviously, 5 mil in the lower body, 4 mil in the upper body, and then you go right the way through to a 6-5, which has the internal inter integrated hood for particularly cold waters when you're talking kind of uh, uh, temperatures well below, sort of like 8 degrees, 7 degrees, um, Northern Europe, right up into Scandinavia, those sort of places, that suit is gonna be popular with those guys that really feel the cold. <clears throat> okay, so the Rewired, what is new for this year? Uh, the Rewired then is basically marketed as Seaskin's kind of performance wetsuit. So something on par with say like the Rip Curl E-Bomb or the uh, O'Neill Hyper Freak. And uh, the reason for that, uh, if I grab the far four, is basically the type of neoprene used, the actual jersey over the top of that neoprene, and the lining of the suit, and the paneling of the suit as well, okay? So this is what makes it a performance wetsuit. And when we say performance wetsuit, what we're really getting at is it's a super flexible, comfortable suit, which has got loads and loads of movement. It's not to say that it's not a warm wetsuit. Obviously, uh, the quality of the suit is still gonna keep you warm, even in the cold months in the UK. But uh, it's basically, in terms of a priority, the priority is more on flexibility. <clears throat> and so there isn't as much things as, say, like thermal lining uh, or liquid taping on the outside of the suit, which offer, off, obviously offer some degree of um, insulation and uh, give the suit maybe a bit more of a robust uh, feeling, uh, but they also add um, restriction, uh, which uh, compromises the value of the suit, which I said before is all about flexibility. Okay, so the rewired key features um, in the upper body, uh, this suit you might be able to see as I bring it a little bit closer, sort of like a textured neoprene or a textured jersey over the neoprene. Now, the entire wetsuit is made with a um, what we call super stretch, therm uh, super stretch neoprene. Um, really, really flexible, loads of movement, okay? And that's the whole way through the suit. Really, really uh, soft to the touch, loads of movement. And the neoprene itself holds lots of cells of air bubbles, uh, which then work to obviously uh, trap warm air and insulate you, but also to give a great degree of flexibility. Now, what sometimes restricts the movement of the, uh, the rubber or the stretch of the rubber is the actual jersey or the lycra or the cotton that they put over the top, okay? So if you've got like a really densely uh, made cotton or jersey, that's basically going to undo all of the flexibility of that rubber by um, sort of not giving enough give in the actual jersey over the top or the lining of the wetsuit. So what they use and what they call this neoprene is a diamond flex neoprene, okay? So as sort of named, but if you can see the sort of... Uh, if the camera focuses in there, you can see the, um, the sort of like diamond shape to the, uh, to the jersey. Now, this technology was exclusive through to O'Neill, uh, basically under the bracket of Techno Butter Neoprene. And what they do is with that jersey, they drop out a huge amount of the cotton. Okay, so the thread is much thinner, or the thread count, I should probably say, is much thinner over that jersey, uh, which basically promotes more flexibility because there's less restriction, but also makes the suit dry quite a lot quicker. Now, in terms of technology, uh, some of it can be quite gimmicky, but with this, it is really, really uh, effective. Okay, so you get a huge amount of flexibility. And you can also tell when you pick up and touch the suit that it's just really, really soft and it's gonna have loads of, um, loads of give to the suit, basically. So you get that in the upper body of the suit, around the shoulders, around underneath the arms, uh, and where it's really important to have the most amount of flexibility, basically. And now, in terms of the paneling on the rewired, as you can tell, the bigger pieces of neoprene, the better with a suit with, um, uh, which is all about performance and flex. Okay, so minimal amount of seams. So no, especially none underneath the arms uh, or over the shoulders where you need more flexibility, basically, and uh, nothing around the sort of, uh, too much around the lumbar. Um, so it's sort of mid back and anything that is there is strategically placed or bent the seams to make sure that it doesn't have any restriction and that's the whole way through the suit. So you don't get that sort of smooth skin panel front and back which you sometimes get. Uh, usually that's like a single line piece of neoprene and they use that a lot of time to keep wind out of the suit but also so they can provide a thermal lining on the inside. Um, but. Uh, that thermal lining and the additional put the, uh, the sort of the complexities of putting in another panel of neoprene mean there's more seams, more restriction, and more weight to the suit. 
Okay, so that's dropped out with this suit. Uh, as we move further down, you can see the usual things. It's uh, Duraflex knee pads, uh, sort of that special material that most of the manufacturers use now, which basically uh, make the knees really indestructible. So the suit's not gonna wear. The rewired, of course, is glued and blind stitched. Uh, and what we mean by glued and blind stitched is basically the seams are sealed. Uh, so with the, with the rewired in particular, uh, what they tend to do is butt the two pieces of neoprene up together. Uh, and then uh, stitch the halfway through on the outside and on the inside. They'll then glue uh, that uh, seam shut so it's sealed and no water comes through. And then with the rewired, it's fully taped as well. So it's reinforced with the black taping. And if I sort of uh, grab this wetsuit, which has magically appeared inside out, you can see that taping throughout the entire suit as well. This particular taping as well, um, it's sort of progressed uh, with technology a little bit. It's like a heat laminated tape, uh, basically, which is done very accurately. So before you used to get a bit of glue pouring out either side, uh, where it was done sort of uh, manually with a different system, and that could then uh, go hard and be quite scratchy against the skin, go yellow over time and generally look, not look very nice or very tidy. Uh, you don't get that with this particular method, and uh, that taping is the whole way through. Taping is particularly good at giving your suit a bit of a longer shelf life. Uh, feels better against the skin and uh, reinforces the seam so you really shouldn't be getting any new cold water throughout the suit you should only have the water inside the suit that has been warmed to your body temperature and keeps you warmer for longer unless of course you get a big flush through from the neck as well okay so um moving then to the um closures it's, it's um, closure part of the suit so the entry um, of the suit uh, it's a chest entry the rewired i'll grab the six mil suit again okay and it's called the iris closure i-r-i-s um, it's basically it's very similar to most chest entry systems um, it's just their particular name or patent on it okay so the iris closure um, as you'd expect it's very useful to have the zip going from in to out so you don't have to fill and clip the two pieces together when your hands are cold so it zips from in to out okay um, nice finishes on the suit this is one of the good things about Ripcurl, YKK zip, which is a really good high quality, uh, non-corroding zip. Uh, so it will last a long time and not sort of fall to pieces. Uh, a bit of silicone on the flap so it doesn't rip or tear. Nice sort of attention to detail, basically. And then you've got the little toggle there, which will just um, uh, clip it shut. And then you've got the actual toggle here, which tightens it, uh, which is a pull cord there, which is nice and strong as well. It won't snap because if it does snap, then it's, you can't replace it yourself. Um, the actual chest entry system itself, it's actually a piece of uh, neoprene or a system that goes over the top of the actual inside of the wetsuit, okay? So up and over, this one's obviously got a hood attached. The inside of the suit itself, it's here, is uh, made so that opens up really, really wide. You can turn it inside out and pull it on, get it up and over your shoulders easy. Um, but basically, the inside part of the suit is here. The chest strip is then sewn over the top, zipped across, so any water that does then come in through the neck or through the collar um, is actually guided out of the chest system and then you've got like a um, drain hole uh, around the back of the suit and it comes out the side as well. So uh, the iris closure or the chest entry system is particularly good at keeping water out of the suit. Um, it's also good, it creates a seal, an unbroken seal around your neck so you're less likely to get flushed through. It's a bit of a better seal than a back zip which will obviously have a break in it to allow the zip run through. Frees up the back panel of the suit as well so you've got more movement in your back and lumbar. Um, the only downside off to it is it's quite hard to get on and off. Obviously, you're getting in through the neck, so you're having to sort of wiggle your way in and then pull it up over and over your body. So a lot of people do prefer a back zip um, for that re reason. Usually um, elder statesmen or elder people, or people with less mobility, basically, okay? So turning the suit inside out, you can see one of the fundamental differences or key selling points of the rewired wetsuit is what's happening inside. So mentioned before, what we do, what I'll actually do is just run the close-up camera up and down that so you can have a little look. And uh, basically, all of that red material you can see is something they call the thermotech lining, okay? Now, this is the jersey or the lining of the inside of the suit, and it's basically a thermal, it's an insulation, um, essentially, on the inside of the suit, which traps warm air, and wicks away water and dries nice and quickly, uh, but it is low pile, so it's like a low pile insulation, um, uh, which means it's lighter, it's more flexible, um, but it's probably not as warm because it's not going to trap as much warm air as something, say, like the dry knit lining on the high-end suit, such as the wire, that kind of thing. So less fluffy, um, but it goes with the ethos of, ethos of the suit, which is performance and flexibility. And that's right the way through down to the knee, okay? So coming away, you can uh, throw it a little bit further away. 
uh, you can see uh, basically the construction of the suit. All the seams and panels are, there's the back of the suit, and this is that sort of low pile thermal lining basically. Nice and soft to the touch, uh, but isn't gonna be too weighty or cause too much um, extra uh, restriction in the wetsuit. Spot welded in certain areas, just to make sure that you're not uh, pulling the suit apart on the critical areas. And then we move back to the outside of the suit. As I said before, the finishing on the suit is really, really good. Um, so they don't cut any corners, sea skins. Uh, basically, having spoken to the, they're a UK based company, sea skins. Uh, all the suits are obviously made overseas in the similar factories to the majority of the wetsuits where they um, basically pioneer most of the technology. But rather than just copying other people, sea skins are all about sort of trying to uh, provide a little bit of innovation as well, um, coming up with new technologies, new finishing to the suit. Uh, and one of the th key things that they uh, spend a lot of time on, um, as I say, is the quality of the suits. And that comes down to the fit. Key things in terms of the quality is the uh, fit of the wetsuit. Um, Seaskins have uh, developed something called Future Fit, which is basically really attention to detail when it comes to the measurements of the suit, the suit, the fit of the suit, and that has going to come from a lot of research and a lot of trying on, trial and error, and testing the wetsuits to make sure that the suit itself and the fit of the suit matches really, really well to the size chart. So if you go by the Future Fit size chart from Seaskins, you can't really go wrong. So um, I'd be a medium tall. I'm six foot one, about 83 kilos at the moment. And uh, I would typically fit really well into a Seaskins medium tall, okay? Um, but follow the size chart and you can't really go wrong. And that is the Future Fit. And one other thing as well that they really um, uh, concentrated on is true thickness. Uh, the thickness of a wetsuit can vary from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer and without that sort of like attention to quality or quality control, um, working closely with the factory or using a reputable factory, factory sometimes if you get a 5.4 wetsuit um, from some brands that might be, you know, might feel more like a 4.3 or a 6.54 might feel like a 6.52. I've seen it in a lot of wetsuits, um, especially from the sort of less known brands. Um, and uh, it goes the other way as well. Sometimes you get a batch of wetsuits will feel more like a uh, six five than a five four, and the arms can be incredibly thick and vary between um, wetsuits, even within a certain batch. Um, that's not true um, with the uh, Seaskins wetsuits. They have, and it's on the um, description of the wetsuit, something called true thickness, uh, basically, which means that it is 100% a, uh, this one's a 6.5, uh, and it's 100% a 6.5. So you actually measure the thickness of the suit where it's explained to be, or described to be, 6 mil or 5 mil, it will be spot on. And um, so for finishing like that, as I say, the zip, um, the silicone lining in places, even down to the logoing, it's really high end and when you actually pick up the wetsuit, try it on and feel it, you just get that um, feeling of quality and value for money. So I'm a really big fan of the Rewired. There's uh, two or three guys in the office that have opted uh, for the Rewired as their um, winter wetsuit. And uh, for good reason, it's just a great balance between flexibility and warmth with the most focus being on flexibility and comfort. And when you try on the wetsuit, you really get to feel that. So um, it's a big recommendation from the wetsuit sensor for people looking for a quality, comfortable, flexible wetsuit. Okay, there'll be warmer wetsuits out there, um, but if performance is your uh, sort of a key priority, then it's definitely a wetsuit uh, worth going for. And that's within the summer months and the 4-3 construction suits as well, um, which will start coming back into stock in sort of springtime. Um, it's a great suit for ladies as well. Again, it's that sort of flexibility and comfort. Stock on ladies' wetsuits, not just in sea skin, but pretty much every brand at the moment, uh, 2020 being a crazy year, it's been really, really hard to come by. Um, but um, going forward into next year in the 4.3s, it would definitely be a recommendation uh, for all genders and uh, for kids as well um, from the Wetsuit Centre.